Do 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 Dongle dangle. All right, so stuff you're gonna need. Obviously, you're gonna need a rod and reel. So I'll use a beach caster and a six ounce lead. I like to use a multiplier. I wouldn't recommend that setup for a beginner. I would say get yourself like a large fixed spool, probably size six thousand and above. I would say thirty pound braid is uh, is probably a good option, or even the uh, fifteen pound uh, test monofilament line. Um, always make sure that you've got a shock leader though just to avoid any crack offs, especially if there's people around. So I use 80 pound mono as a cool box or a cool bag, or at the very least, one of those plastic bags for life with some ice packs thrown in. Other stuff you're gonna need, sunblock, you're gonna need a knife, a disgorger tool. Where you wanna be is nowhere near uh, that fish when the, when the hooks are, when they're flapping about and the hooks are going everywhere. I've got some pre-tied feathers. So I pre-tie that. Um, these, these are quite nice, you know, the, with the trap swivels. Um, you don't need them, I just prefer them. And in here you can see I've pre-tied my uh, mackerel feathers that, that I'm going to tie on in groups of five. Uh, cut off, replace, you know, as you need. It's not dawn or dusk. You know, dawn or dusk is, is the best time to be coming out for mackerel. Um, this is just middle of the day. It's a bit overcast, so maybe I'll get some fish. Just follow my finger, the line here. That's the current line. Uh, I'm not too sure what forms them. I think it might be um, when water of different speeds and temperatures hit each other, it forms these lines. But it does give you a good indication of, of where the current's going to be. So if you're out mackerel feathering, you do want to try to get out into some current if you can. All right, I'll get these tied up uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll yeah, be right back. It's really the summer months. You want to be out and trying to do. It's better to get good at tying one type of knot than to try and learn a whole bunch. Because a well-tied half-blood knot is going to be stronger than a badly tied uni knot or palama knot or whatever else those people on Facebook are talking about. So I just realized I didn't say why a fixed spool is a better choice for the dinner. The fixed spool will uh, do a couple things for you. Number one, is, uh, is pulled off by the weight that you're throwing. So there's no, no real chance of too much line coming off unless there's a heavy crosswind or you've overfilled the spool. So it's a pretty safe bet you're not going to get many wind knots. And if you fill the spool a couple of millimeters under, you're pretty much guaranteed to never really have to worry about that sort of thing. Whereas on a multiplier, every single cast, regardless of the conditions, you're at risk of an overrun because it's a free spool spinning. And so you have to be able to control your reel, your cast, etc. To think about the wind. Another reason why a fixed spool is, uh, is easier when you're retrieving the line, it lays the line down perfectly for you. So you don't get any big bunches of line on a good fixable anyway. Whereas on a multiplier, you have to use your thumb to make sure that the line level is equal as you're reeling in. Otherwise, it's very likely you'll get an overrun on your next cast. wondering why anyone would use a multiplier um, they sound like such a pain I think if you're not used to multipliers they would just ruin your day's fishing all right is it gonna be first cast fish
just show you how I dispatch it now. The lateral line, imagine where that meets with the eyes. The fish should seize momentarily as you slide the blade into its brain. Right now, the fish is dead. The heart's still beating. Put the knife in behind the gills. Come down. So we'll just let that bleed out. I'm gonna pop it in the cool bath.